Can you tell, tell us about your, your places? Is this, is this the kind of thing you're doing at your universities? No, not yet. <laughs> yes. yes, I have a question about uh, in the case of our city, uh, our university, uh -huh. uh, University of Dana. And uh, in uh, our university, there are two uh, east major technical engineering uh, faculty mm -hmm. and basement. So in our university for engineering students, they have some good ideas. Yeah. But I haven't got experience to, uh, for marketing or to develop a company, for example. And for economic students, they haven't got knowledge about uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So how to uh, cooperate between Combine. economic students and yeah. engineering students? Just yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the way that we do it is more organic. Yeah. So we will um, allow people to do our programs as teams, mm -hmm. and we actually find that if there's a team, they have yes. a much stronger chance of success. Yes. And so it's great if someone has got technical skills and business skills and creative skills, and you can come up with this dream team. It doesn't always happen. There'll normally be a gap in the team, mm -hmm. um, and I think that. You know, our, our role and your role is probably to help them point out where that gap is. And then that's one of their challenges as a, as a startup is to fill that gap. And so you could be more structured about it and say, you know, we're going to do a, 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 a project like this or some kind of set thing where you bring the two groups together and say, pair up and see if you can support each other. Yeah. There's this. Um, the um, the Royal Academy uh, have a great product design program, and they work with a business school, and their students come in and help them do a go-to-market plan on that product design. So you can set briefs like that for people to bring them together. Yeah. Yep. Are the 50 visual communication students uh, of the same promotion, uh, and were they all the promotion? participate in the contest. Um, my question is, for the 50 students who participated in the contest, are they all from the same promotion and are they the promotion uh, at uh, Northern Met? That is, is it is it a part of their uh, studies to do? Yeah, so it was assessed. Yeah, so it was a module that we set up. Um, I worked in collaboration with the, their tutor, um, and it was a 10 week process. So it was um, the businesses pitched, they did this design work, and then they pitched at the end. And uh, me and the academic assessed, formally assessed, um, what the, the pitching. Um, like we said, the, the three students that went on to win, they, they do get to have their, their work uh, used. But all the 50 did do the whole process all the way through and were formally assessed as well. Yeah. That's what we spoke yesterday, that many courses nowadays have placement mm -hmm. modules. So as part mm -hmm. of their placement, they don't necessarily have to go where, for example, mm -hmm. the course leader may have links. But they may go to the accelerator and think of their ideas, if they put forward their ideas, and what they do with the accelerator can go towards the assessment on their module, on the placement module. Yeah, yeah and often those accelerators, uh, myself and my colleague, will come in and give them a lecture, talk to them about how to see the whole process, how to do <coughs> how to do good pitching. So it's not just all about design or whatever technical skills they're learning on that module, but we'll, we'll bring in some entrepreneurial skills like pitching, um, thinking perhaps about a budget of how they're going to make these designs and things like that. So they do get some extra sort of top-up lessons from Accelerator on how to think about things in a more business-like approach sometimes. Yeah. 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 <coughs> And my first question is, uh, how do you select the students, you said the 50 students? Yes. And uh, the next question is, how do you arrange the, the mentor or trainer <coughs> for the particular students? So how do we select the students and how do we... Yeah, first, the, how do you select the students? So yeah. you say for the 50 students, so there are many, many students. Yeah. So, and the next is, uh, how do you arrange the mentor, maybe the trainer or... Okay. The mentors and the training. Okay. 
Um, the 50 students in this case was a whole studio of, um, of students. So there was no, there was, uh, that was just who the lecturer was in charge of. So that's who we collaborated with. So at that stage, there wasn't necessarily selection, but just people that were inside that module. So that was only 50, well, 50 in that studio. And then to get down to the three, it was literally a panel, a judgment panel, judging panel, I should say, uh, made up of the businesses. So like a real world situation, uh, numerous pitches were made and they were picked on, on merit and which ones would work well, which ones responded best to the brief. Um, and the other question? Uh, kind of the, the mentorship or the support. Mentorship. Um, so the support would be from the academic leading it, so uh, the, the lecturer that run the studio, so she's uh, really well qualified and experienced, a graphic designer herself and has run many branding projects and then myself as well was helping. So we would uh, co-lecture sometimes, uh, feedback on um, some of the uh, draft work they put in. Um, so it was, there was two of us that got to feed in at various points. Yeah. And these, this project and the, the next one we'll talk about are ones where we're working with academics, so as part of the academic process. Actually, most of the stuff that we do is outside of, of the academic stream. And it's stuff that students opt in up in for. And so we find that, you know, if you, to your point earlier, you know, how do you find those students who are really passionate about this and really want to do this and have the commitment, you need, those people need to be able to have the option to do this. And so we'll work with, with modules and academic groups, but what we do mostly is work with students who want to do this above and beyond what they're doing at university. And so for those programs, for example, the Big Idea Challenge, which I showed you the competition, that is very competitive, and there is a big selection process for that. Mm -hmm. And so the way that we do that is we work by doing lots of marketing. So our job is obviously to get every student in the university, ideally, to know about this opportunity. Uh, and then we let them apply with their ideas uh, to us. Uh, so there's an online application form. They can do a, a pitch video to show a bit of background about them. Um, we want to hear about their idea, we want to hear about the team behind it, we want to hear about the market. Um, and then we will go through all those applications. We have about 150 applications every year, and we get that down to about 50. We take those 50, and we invite them here for the day, we take them through a, a day of activities where we give them some skills and knowledge, but we're also testing them as well. And from that we make the final, the finalist selection, which is about 12. And those we make the, the videos for and give some more coaching to. Uh, and those are the ones that can end up winning awards at the end. So um, the team here is really the main um, mentors and support. Um, and then we pull in advisors and, and experts from outside as well. And could you tell me more clearly about the funding for the operation at the accelerator? You funding, yes. Yeah. So there's two, yeah. two funding sources. Um, one, as I mentioned, we've got 30 technology startups in the building here. So they pay to be here and they pay for our support. Mm -hmm. And so that makes up the majority of our funding. Mm -hmm. um, and then the student uh, focus programs, such as the one Emma just mentioned, um, are subsidized by London Met University. So we have a small amount of money from the university, mm -hmm. which allows us to do you know, this non-commercial mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. The project that she is uh, handling now looks very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, it's a very good uh, looks like. Uh, we talked about mostly the soft parts, you know, the, like uh, the launching, branding. Now, what about the technical part, like in the production aspect? Is there also she's getting any help, or is that also being worked into? Yeah, so uh, back to mentoring and advice. So um, I said to and her <coughs> co-founder of uh, uh, setting up a business. I've had uh, quite, uh, so they're part of Launchpad, which we're going to hear about actually after the break. Um, but we've helped them quite a lot with the technicals of setting up a business, so doing the costing and pricing and all the stuff that goes into a business plan, really. So uh, my colleague, Simon and myself, so we've taken them through costing and pricing, how to get something into production. So we had to, they had to research um, how to get uh, drinks tested, uh, what, what's, the, um, what's the UK standards of getting drinks on the shelves and things like that. So that, yes, a lot of technical help has gone into it. It's student-led or it's business-led, so uh, they do all the hard work, but we're here as business advisors 
to perhaps point them in the right direction of how to do research, uh, maybe use finance templates and things like that, or marketing planning templates. And then, again, from our business advice or getting experts in or referring them to other people that can help in the specialist areas. Yeah. I mean, tech, tech issues that do come up, you have a lot of people who have an idea um, which is actually technically quite complicated. Uh, I mean, a, a drinks company, there are, lots, there are lots of challenges you have to go through, um, but if you're smart, you can kind of work those out. If, if you're trying to build the next Facebook and you don't know how to code, you're going to be in some trouble. And so we do have people like that. Um, and normally what happens with them is that they, going back to your point about the team, you know, you've got that hole in your team, so you even need to find a technical co-founder co or you need to find some money to pay someone to build you a product. And so those are the two, two ways that we, we either point them in those two directions. <laughs>